presentation is part of the REVC series, and I'm Cindy Sweeney, I'm the REVC project coordinator. And this is um, a series of topics, kind of life skill topics, how to um, topics that we created from a gift that we were given to the university um, and tasks to create. But we think it's a wonderful project. It's we're covering eight topics of things we believe are useful and of interest to you. And today we're covering the law. And this is Mike Wells, who's with us. He's the um, recent former president of the State Bar Association and has been in legal practice for many years. And he's a great, engaging speaker. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about what he feels, from his experience, you ought to know as you you know, remain as a student and then go out as a young professional. So um, we had a session this morning with the staff here that was great. We had great questions and it was, it was interesting. So um, the other thing, Ron is going to, this is Rhonda Kosciusko, the Career Service Advisor, and um, she's going to tell you a little bit about how we're, what we're doing with these series that we've created. Yeah, just so that you know, because hopefully after today you're going to be interested in seeing all of these presentations. Um, we actually, this fall, we have a trans, have, I don't know how many of you have heard of our transition strategy courses, um, but they're basically one, cr uh, one credit hour courses that cover um, all kinds of issues related to preparing for, for life after Elon. We are actually creating one that specifically includes the Redson series, so we will have the eight presentations on things such as law and insurance and um, real estate in terms of what I you know, need to do to, to find a place to live once I graduate and I have that first job. So a lot of those transitional issues that um, hopefully provide you um, with you know, what you need to think about as you begin to leave Elon and are establishing your, your life. And so the transition strategy courses, again, we're doing one this fall. I think I have one space left in that. It's the second half of the semester. So you could go on on track and find that. It's under COE 310. And we will have another one during winter term that will encompass all of these topics. And we'll also do that again in the spring semester. So that's part of how we're rolling out this whole series of, of transition programs. And then we'll also, in the spring, um, have a kind of freestanding set of all all eight, so you can come to whichever ones are of interest to you that way also. But you'll see more about that in the spring as we start doing that. But anyway, thank you for joining us today, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. Okay, thanks, and uh, this is a wonderful program. Um, I think very innovative, uh, and I think uh, you should feel very uh, proud that you're part of a university that, that has this kind of common sense uh, program to, to go over things that you, there's no reason why you would learn this in your normal course of, uh, of, of study here. So this is really common sense stuff uh, that will help you in a variety of ways. Now, uh, how, some of you I know are not from North Carolina. How many of y'all are, are uh, from, how many of you are not from North Carolina? Okay, just, uh, <laughs> just about everybody. Well, bless your heart. I hope you get a chance to move to North Carolina someday. <laughs> but I'm sure you're from a good place, and I'm sure you're going back to a good place. Um, I'm not licensed, obviously, except uh, here in North Carolina in one other state. But uh, if you get stuck on something, wherever you are, whenever you get stuck and you're thinking, how do I find a lawyer in whatever state you live in? I really don't mind it if you call me or email me and say, I heard you speak at Elon five years ago and I'm trying to find my way through on something. If you call me or email me and say, I heard you speak, then I will do my very best to help you find a lawyer. Obviously, I can't give you legal advice in that state, but many times I can sort of frame up things in ways that are probably what the law is in that state and can be helpful to you. Uh, so if you just tell me, I heard you speak at Elon. Uh, having been a bar leader, I've dealt with uh, lawyers across the country. I have uh, no lawyers in every single state of, of this country. And so uh, if you or your family doesn't have some contact, you contact me, I can help you find a lawyer. And many times maybe help you sort of frame up and say, well, what do you do next? What do you do next? 
And the main thing I would tell you about your legal issues is don't assume you know because the law can be very tricky. Uh, and that is not intended to be tricky, but it's, it's very complicated. And so just don't assume that you know somebody said, a buddy of mine told me, uh, you really need to, when you have legal rights and legal issues, you don't want to miss that. It's always good to check. Uh, I call it the best legal problem you never had uh, by doing a, a practical thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through uh, a little outline here uh, and there's no uh, magic in any of these. We've discussed them and I'll, I'll spend more time on others, but I want to encourage you to feel like you can ask questions, whether you ask them today, whether you get home, whether you think about it, whether you're concerned about something. If you call me or email me later, you've got my contact information. I'm more than glad to talk to you. I give a lot of talks. Uh, if you call me about something, what you talk to me about is protected by attorney-client privilege. So I don't call up Elon University, I don't call up your mamas and daddies, I don't call up anybody. What you tell me, even if it's just a for free conversation, is protected by attorney client. So if there's something on your mind, something you're worried about, you call me, we'll talk about it. Don't assume, well, it'll probably just kind of go away. If you've got a concern and with your good brain about something, you probably ought to be talking to somebody that can point you in the right direction. Okay, we're going to run through this. And then as I say, as you have questions, just uh, raise your hand. Uh, there aren't any dumb questions on things about this. Uh, so, getting a job, uh, you all know more about Facebook and social media than I do, but uh, you would be amazed at the number of people that mine your information on your social media. If you go to get a job, uh, somebody's going to look you up on social media and see what you're saying about yourself, what your picture uh, is. Um, what things you say and what you don't say, and they're gonna make some impressions uh, about that. Uh, they're gonna get it from the interview, but if you're on the, um, you know, on the um, uh, in social media and you're talking about uh, particular uh, drugs of choice, uh, that's probably not gonna be a real good thing for a prospective employer to see. A lot of times we have conversational things like that, and we just don't think about, well, somebody, I'm, I'm talking to the whole world, you know, and half the problems that Many politicians, a whole lot of other people have is because everything they say is in the public domain. Well, when you get on social media, everything's out there and it doesn't go away and you know, you need to be sure about your settings and things like that. You know about that. Just be mindful that prospective employers look at what your Facebook page says. They're gonna look at these things. Don't, don't think that they don't check it out. Do you have any sort of record? Um, if you've got a uh, traffic record, or if you have any sort of criminal record, uh, then that can be checked. It's a matter of public record, and they can find it out, and they will find it out, because they want to find out uh, if you've done anything that's in violation of the law. So if you have a, a conviction, maybe when you were a uh, high school student, say, for example, uh, or some other, uh, be, mad, be mindful that that's going to be on the public record, and somebody can look it up. Uh, and um, there are certain laws that allow you to uh, wipe out certain charges. For example, if you have a minor marijuana charge, for example, uh, possession of marijuana. Uh, well, many states, probably the state in which you live that you may end up residing where you work, uh, probably has a law that says, well, if you had a minor thing mm -hmm. uh, and nothing else has happened, uh, you know, you're of good character, you can get that charge taken off the public record. So that when you go to look for a job and, and you add, they ask you if you've ever been convicted or anything, you can say honestly, no, under the law, under those circumstances, even though you have been convicted, if it's wiped out, you can say honestly, no, I have not been convicted. Obviously, it doesn't do you much good to be able to say, uh, I got it taken off, but when they ask you, you say, well, uh, you know, yeah, I got convicted, but I got to take it off. So I just to <laughs> take it off and to be able to say honestly under the law, under those circumstances, uh, that you were not convicted. Watch out for your credit history. I'm sure from the time you started uh, college, probably before, you've been getting credit card applications. Uh, that, all that stuff adds up. Be very careful about your credit. Uh, be sure you pay your bills on time. And uh, uh, because your credit history will follow you when you go to get a job, uh, they may check on your credit history to determine 
uh, whether or not you're a person of good, good character, do you pay your bills? And of course, that's an important piece when you hire somebody. You can get a copy of your credit report, and I've given you some information there. Uh, I would encourage you to be mindful. You should know the law gives you what's called, I say the law, society gives you what's called a credit score. About, well, how good is your credit? I think it goes from about 200 to 850. Uh, and so uh, if you have certain amounts of debt, you pay your bills, and you don't have any bad things that happen to you, you're going to have a high credit rating. It's going to be cheaper for you, and you go to buy a house and do some other things. But, uh, but you need to know what your credit score is. When you, when you go out to look about a job, uh, and this is a way you can find out what it is uh, for free. If you have uh, financial issues, if you've accumulated a fair amount of debt with credit cards because uh, they loan you all kinds of money for next to nothing on a monthly payment, uh, it's kind of like free money, you think, but then the next thing you know, holy cow, you owe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And you know, you, what do you do then? And that's what happens to a lot of young people because they make this credit so easy to obtain, payments are so cheap, they don't care. They don't want you to pay off the bill because they're getting 23% interest. So just be mindful of what you have. Uh, check on it. Uh, if you get stuck someplace, if you're in New York State and you're wondering about this, uh, call me. I can probably point you in the right direction about how you can get a, a fair read on well, what do I do if I've got this debt? What can I do to clean this up? And there are things that can be done to, uh, to clean that up. <coughs> um, being arrested. Um, is a big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, and I would say to you that a lot of times when we're in school, and you know, I went to school a hundred years ago, but Mr. Elon, I think, was one of that guy I went to school with. Um, <laughs> and my three children did, uh, of course. Uh, but the issue, if you, here's where kids get into trouble with the law. They're with a crowd, and you're doing what you think is just sort of a Thing. You're going over to Chapel Hill and you're going to somebody's fraternity house and you're going to take something because it's a prank because you've some friend of yours from high school. Well, if you're in the vehicle, if you're part of this and somebody's taking something, the fact that, well, it wasn't your idea, you were along for the ride, you didn't know they were going to do this, you're in for the haul on this because you're complicit in the event. So just be mindful, as your mother and father told you, you know, the crowd that you run with, don't get yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, and then next thing you know, somebody's charged you because you're, you know, you're in the group. So just be mindful uh, of uh, and, and use your good sense. And the best way I could say uh, to you is to say, "Would my mama want me doing this?" <laughs> and if your answer to that, "No, my mama would not me want me doing this." then that's the best thing. Now don't ask if your dad would want you to do this because dads don't know what mamas do. So always listen to what your mama says. They're the ones that have got sense. The dad may not have as much sense. And being a dumb dad, I'm, I can speak from some experience on that. So just be cautious about the things that you do. As you get older, uh, you know, you're not in, you know, you're not a kid anymore. These things have consequences. Employment contracts. Um, you may work for a company coming out of school in which you uh, are asked to sign on a contract that says, now look, we're going to be telling you some stuff about what we do. We've got this software package. We've got some kind of uh, system that gives us an advantage uh, in, our, in what we do. And when we do it a certain way, uh, if we tell you how to do this a certain way, we don't want you leaving our employment and going to work for our competitor across town and, um, and using what secret stuff we've told you. And so you're going to likely be asked to sign a contract that says if you leave, uh, you can't tell anybody the, the stuff we've told you uh, because we've got, that's our advantage, and they're going to have limits that say you can't, um, you can't tell anybody the stuff that you've learned. Uh, you can't go to work for a competitor within, uh, you know, a 100-mile radius or in the state in which you are. Uh, are living and for a period of time. And those laws are real. And when you sign it, it's like, well, you know, they didn't really mean it. They, they really mean it because they invest a lot in your training and they're not going to train you and have to go work for somebody else and then, you know, use that against them. So when you sign a, a contract like that, which you agree, if you leave, 
there's some things you can't do. You really need to know what, what you're signing because they do follow up on those things because they do invest a lot uh, in you. Uh, the greatest single investment that a company has is in their employees. And when you come out of school from a place like Elon University, they're invested in your brain power and what they hope is a long-term relationship. And so they're going to tell you some things and you're going to learn some things in that investment that they're not going to want to just throw it away because you decide I want to go to work uh, across town. Um, Selling your vehicle, buying a vehicle, buying real estate. I won't spend so much time talking about buying a home uh, because in your entry level job, you're probably not going to be buying a home quite yet. Uh, if you do buy a home, just listen to what your realtor tells you, I guess would probably be the easiest way to tell you. But uh, let's talk a little bit about leases. Um, and uh, how many of y'all, uh, let's see, do you have to live on campus here? So how many of y'all uh, live off campus? Okay. Well, when you get into uh, to leases, uh, whose name's on the lease? They're the ones legally responsible. So when you have people who are not on the lease, oh, they're your roommates and they're going to pay and they're going to do. Well, yeah, but they're not legally liable to the landlord. You're the one who's legally liable. You may have a great claim against your former roommate, for damages, but the odds of you collecting that are probably zero uh, because they're not going to have um, any assets that they don't want to pay. So just be mindful when you get into relationships uh, before people get out of town and you know graduation comes or the, the you know if anybody owes any money, you really need to try to chase down that money before you get uh, somebody leaves uh, because the odds of you getting that money are going to be. Um, Slim and not not because they don't know it, but just practically speaking, it's going to be very difficult to uh, to collect on that. Um, vehicles. Uh, how many of y'all own? Uh, how, I'm, I'm gonna guess everybody here has. Anybody here that doesn't have a vehicle? Okay. And uh, do you know if you own the vehicle, or is your mom and dad own the vehicle, or somebody? Else? Huh? Parents for sure. Parents. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I own my vehicle. What? Huh? I have my vehicle. Okay. Well, someday, whether you own it or your parents own it, that's going to be, you're going to be selling that vehicle, and if it's your parents, then that's going to deal with that, uh, that, that issue. But when you go to buy a vehicle, uh, it's really important, probably on your first time you're buying a vehicle, uh, that you buy it from a reputable, a reputable uh, person. It'd be very difficult for you to negotiate a deal with an individual about buying a used car if you've never, if you've never done that before because there's a lot of, uh, it's just, uh, you need to know what you're doing on that. And so my advice would be uh, buy from a reputable dealer. Uh, if you can get a certified vehicle, you know, where they've checked out things. But when any, if you buy a vehicle, always, uh, you, you need to make sure that the major systems work well. Somebody tells you, oh, this is a good car, this is a great car. The law doesn't, if, you, if your car breaks down, you can say, well, this is not a great car. Well, the law doesn't require anybody. That's just what they call puffing of wares. Oh, this is a great car. You'll love this car. I've loved this car. This car's been a good car for me. You won't have, you know. Well, then it turns out it's not going to be a good car. That's not enough to say you've got a specific warranty. So you want somebody checking out those systems, the transmission, the HVA, the you know, heating, air conditioning, the electronic systems. Make sure all of that's uh, working because uh, you may get a car that's uh, uh, got uh, challenges. Um, let's talk a little bit about, about purchases. Uh, if you buy an item from a store, uh, under the law, almost always, they, the store has no legal obligation to take back what you bought. So if you buy something and you decide, well, um, I don't like that style or it didn't fit after all. Uh, the law says they don't have to take that back. As a practical matter, they're going to take it back because they want you coming back to buy some more stuff from them. But you need to make sure what that policy is before you buy something about their return policy. And now about everything's on sale now. You know, everybody's on sale. But there are what we call in the trade true sales. So if somebody buys something at the end of the season 
and they say sale, 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 and you get a great deal, you better be watching for the signs to see what is, if I buy this and it doesn't fit or I change my mind, they may say you can't bring it back because they take, they've taken the clothes and they've shipped into a secondary market in South America or Southeast Asia or someplace. So when you have a sale, since everything's on sale, ask them, if this doesn't fit, if I don't like this, if I haven't worn it, of course if you use it, you, you own it, uh, may I bring this back? If I bring it back, what happens? Do I get a credit? Can I replace it? How, how does that work? Just always know what that is. Um, and uh, it always uh, helps to, uh, to ask those questions. Credit card liability. Uh, this is a big issue uh, because so many people uh, get underwater on, on their debt. And we've touched on that a little bit, but it's important for you to know because here, here's why. Credit card companies, 96% of all credit cards are paid off. And so they send you these credit card applications indiscriminately. They haven't checked you out. They have no idea what your credit score is, whether you pay your bills or you don't. They just know 96% of the people, people, time people pay, and they're making 22, 23% interest. So they don't care what your credit record is because they know disproportionately you're going to pay. So nobody's uh, kind of run you through the ringer to see if you're of good credit, but you can get. 10, 15, 20, 30 thousand dollars of credit card bills like that. Because as you know, you can owe a lot of money and they have a minimum payment. And if you quit that minimum payment, it would take you till your children went to college uh, before you'd be able to pay that off on those minimum payments. Uh, so that's how people get, you, you sneak up. Back when I was in school many years ago, you know, you, you pay cash, you wrote a check. And when you ran out of money, you were out of money. You didn't have any, well, I could get $500 item and pay so much a month. So when you ran out of money, you, that was it. You didn't buy anything else. But now, of course, as you know, you can buy all kinds of things. Uh, so be careful of your credit card liability. Keep mindful uh, of that. I won't really talk about scams so much. You all know more about the internet and issues than most folks. Uh, I, I presume you have secure passwords uh, on your materials and that your password is not password or let me in or uh, some things like that. Uh, it doesn't take much of a hacker to go through. They can get through your stuff. Uh, you may think it's fairly secure, but you better have a, a password that is really, uh, they're not going to be able to go on the public record and find out uh, and, 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 and extrapolate it. Okay, number nine, avoiding legal problems with contracts for services. Now, most of you all probably haven't had many occasions up till now about uh, buying stuff or getting services from people. Uh, but anytime uh, you get services or, you, or you're paying for something, uh, then you need to know well, what's the deal? What are the terms of the arrangement? And, and uh, a lot of times, uh, and this happens to a lot of people, uh, if you were to say, well, what's the deal? Well, who's going to pay, and when are they going to pay it, and what are the terms? And if you had to repeat it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know. I mean, if you had to repeat it, you wouldn't know what the terms are. Well, if you can't know what the terms are, why do you think the person with whom you're dealing is going to know? A lot of times people have legal problems because they have a genuine misunderstanding, disagreement about what the deal is. Now, I'm sure it's probably universal about who, what, when, where, why, right? If you uh, make a deal on anything that's over a hundred bucks, it makes sense for you to say, well, who the, who's going to do what? When are they going to do it? How much it's going to cost? When are they going to get, in other words, that you know what the arrangement is. And it's always helpful if you just kind of repeat, okay, now you're going to do this on Friday. I'm going to pay you this much today. When I come back, it's going to be that. And if you do that one thing, a lot of the, legal issues and angst that you're going to have on people not doing certain things are going to go away because there's a clear understanding about what you're going to do and what the <coughs> other party um, is going to do. Okay, traffic tickets. Uh, now I'm sure no one at Elon has ever had a traffic ticket because you were law-abiding citizens, but on the off chance <laughs> that maybe you've got the ticket in another state 
or maybe around here. What happens to those tickets? Well, because you may not have a real good memory of it, that doesn't mean that there's not some record written down. For example, you get a ticket going to Wilmington, to the beach, at the end of your school year, graduation. And you sort of forget about it because the officer says you can pay it off. And you think, great, uh, if I can pay it off, I guess that means it's sort of mine. Well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, you need to know when you get tickets that there are, they are compiled in the state in which you live. Uh, so if you get in North Carolina, if you, let's say you, uh, well, um, the state in which you live, every time you have some traffic conviction, it's going to be on your record. If you get a conviction here and you go back to your home state, uh, some of those convictions will follow you to your home state. So if you go and you think, well, I live in New York State and I got that ticket down in North Carolina, that's not going to follow me back to New York State. Well, maybe, maybe not. States have reciprocal <coughs> agreements back and forth. I get a, 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 people in North Carolina um, who are convicted of things who live in New York will ship some things to New York and vice versa. So. When you get a ticket, just be careful. When you get a ticket, my advice would always be call your insurance agent, call your parents' insurance agent, call your parents, call somebody who can find out uh, before you pay off a ticket because you may be paying off a ticket that will cause you issues in terms of your license. Uh, but more than that, it's going to cause you uh, issues regarding your insurance. Uh, there might be a reasonable chance that when you graduate and you get a job that your parents may say, you know what, uh, your insurance is on your nickel now. You got a job, we're not paying for it. Until you're 25 years of age, your insurance is going to be very, very expensive because a disproportionate number of accidents occur by drivers who are under 25, particularly males. <laughs> um, and I can't go into, I could tell you the yeah, reasons, but I have to kill you so I can't go into that too much. But, uh, but that's just, that's, that's what the numbers say and show. So when you get traffic tickets, uh, some of those, you, if you get certain traffic tickets, it may seem pretty benign, but it can cause your insurance <coughs> to go up 25 or 30 percent a year for three years. So now you're already at a high rate. You know, you're out on, you're not on your mama's and daddy's insurance company now. You're paying for your own because you're under 25, you pay a lot. You get a ticket like that and you get a conviction, I'm going to tell you, you're talking about a fold of money, hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars that you may have because you got a ticket, you didn't pay attention, you didn't ask. So these things add up and be mindful until you're 25 or older. Uh, these things by insurance companies are really going to whack you on, on your expenses. And as I say, it's one thing when your parents are paying it. When you got a job and you got a budget and they say, Buster, you're on your own, I educated you, uh, you're going to find out it uh, can be very, very, very expensive. Um, what to do if you're in a wreck? Um, now, I know none of you would be involved in a wreck in which you are at fault. But on the off chances, somebody might suggest that possibly you could have also been at fault. Uh, it's always good to call the police. Uh, most states are going to have, probably all states have rules that say if you have anybody hurt, if you have much property damage, you have to call the police. It's a legal violation not to call the police and say, uh, I, I had this, had this wreck. So uh, I'm going to send over, uh, and you all can get this, I've given you some information about the North Carolina Bar Association, uh, and we'll get some, let's say, some of these pamphlets, but the North Carolina Bar Association, lawyers have written pamphlets without any legalese in there that explains basic kinds of topics, the things that you, as a layperson, would have, and one of those uh, talks about what do you do if you're in a wreck, and it kind of goes through the kind of common sense kinds of questions that you would want to have, have answered. Um, but uh, the main thing is call an officer, call an officer, sort out uh, the facts as best you can, don't assume somebody's going to 
Shane's the information uh, uh, and it's all going to work out. Call the call the call the police uh, if, if you can. Uh, Will's powers of attorney. Uh, it's not nearly as important when you all are your age. Uh, I mean, everybody should have it when they turn 18, uh, particularly when you get a job, particularly when you, uh, if, you, uh, if you marry or if you have a significant other uh, with whom you're buying property, you have some sort of contractual relationship, uh, it, it'd be real good to get all that laid out if something happens to somebody, who gets what and what the, what the circumstances are. Um, where can I get information on common legal issues? Uh, again, if you go to this website in North Carolina, uh, you're going to be able to, uh, to find a little pamphlet that's easy to read and easy to understand on a host of subjects. Uh, you can get them in the public library here in North Carolina. Uh, I'm confident that most states have uh, bar associations that have programs like this where you can, can get these. The main thing that I would suggest to you, when, again, when in doubt, uh, Call somebody and just don't assume that something's not that big a deal. Don't assume that something's not that big a deal. I've given you some information here about if you um, have an issue in North Carolina, you can get a 30-minute conference for no more than $50. Many times the lawyers won't even charge anything if it's over the, over the telephone. Uh, other states have programs like that. If you get to another state, you move back home, um, and um, if you call your, the state bar, just call up information the state bar, they're going to give you a they're, they're likely going to have a program like that where you can talk to a lawyer uh, for a very small sum of money and that information is protected by attorney-client uh, privilege um, and it's good to get that information. Now, if you're looking for a lawyer in another state, uh, this is a website that you can contact uh, if you need to find a lawyer in another state. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, having um, served uh, as president of the North Carolina Bar Association, and I have relationships with lawyers all across the country. So if you said, well, I'm moving to Spokane, Washington, and you said, I need to find a lawyer on something, if you called me, I could give you the name of somebody in Washington State uh, whom you could call and can kind of orient you. Of course, you'll be able to ask other people, too. but. Um, uh, Again, don't assume, uh, always ask uh, and find out uh, information. And when you have these kinds of uh, programs where you can call and you're not, uh, you know, you just get a little bit of, do I even need a lawyer? What's involved in this? How involved is this? If you can get that done for next to nothing or nothing, uh, you know, you don't, no, no one wants to pay $500 to a lawyer to find out you didn't need to talk to a lawyer. Um, so that's why these programs are so helpful. In North Carolina, for example, uh, we process 70,000 individuals in a year. So a lot of people are calling with uh, these sort of this and that questions. Do I need a lawyer? How would I work? How would I find one? What should I do? Uh, a lot of times when people have legal issues, uh, they're more just sort of common sense issues. Uh, most legal issues with, that you're going to encounter throughout your working career are going to be things that don't rise to the level likely that you need to hire a lawyer. But you need to learn to think through uh, issues and just sort of use your good common sense. Um, and um, just like the who, what, when, where, why. Well, well what is the deal? Uh, do, is there a clear understanding? And if people do those kinds of things, then it's the best legal problem uh, you never have. Now, one of the questions uh, that was raised is, well, what do you do if you're um, uh, on traffic tickets or criminal things? Well, anytime you deal with an officer of the law, it is real important that you be very polite because your prospect of getting any kind of um, favor uh, is going to be governed by how, good, how nice you work. If you're a smart aleck, you're belligerent, um, you're, you're going to have some real challenges because that officer has a lot of discretion down the road. You go to court, you get a lawyer, don't get a lawyer. If you have a bad attitude, 
it's not going to end well for you. Now, that does not mean that does not mean that you can't have a difference of opinion with the officer. But if you're charged with going, you know, 66 in a 45 zone, and the officer says, and you know, you're going 66, and you say, well, officer, I really, I don't, I don't think I was going that that fast, so I, I don't know that I. And well, he's probably going to show you the radar gun. Uh, but don't get into a you know verbal bombast about. Well, you could have stopped anybody else. You picked me out because I'm a student. I've got out of state tag. Don't get into any of that sort of stuff. Uh, and, and you know maybe it, I don't think it's going to be true. It may be true, but likely it's not true. But it doesn't really make any difference if you over the speed limit. You're over the speed limit. And with all that, they could have stopped me. Should have stopped somebody else. That's not going to be a defense. They should have shot that other, stopped that other car. That's not a legal defense. Uh, so be mindful and be polite. And uh, it goes a long way because officers, uh, you know, they dealt with a lot of young people. And sometimes young people, this is not true at Elon, but it is at some other schools, uh, that uh, sometimes kids can have a mouth on them. They can have a mouth on them. Maybe like Chapel Hill or someplace like that. <laughs> um, but no place at Elon. But, uh, and, and, you know, if you've had anything to drink or, you know, you've been to a party or you're in a, <clears throat> Good mood, you know. You may you may be a little rambunctious in your comment. Uh, be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. Be thoughtful. Be respectful. Down the road, uh, the odds are it's going to to help you. If you are arrested, uh, you have a right to say nothing. Under the law of this country, you have, as you've seen on the cop shows and other things, you have a right to remain silent. You don't have to say anything. And if you're not certain about things, you'd be better off not to say anything. Uh, contact a lawyer if it's a real serious matter, certainly. Uh, but uh, be mindful of um, uh, you know, what you say can be used against you. Now, let me talk a little bit about, about drinking. Um, this is an issue across this country. Uh, and, and people know that college kids have fun. Nobody wants anybody not to have fun as a college kid. Uh, but be mindful that when you get in a vehicle, it is under the law, it is a deadly weapon. Under the law of North Carolina and all other states, a vehicle is a deadly weapon. And so when you're driving and you consume some intoxicant, whether some drug, illegal drug or in excess a legal drug you know that's you've taken too much of or alcohol uh, it's a serious thing it is a serious thing and you're not going to be able to realize the extent to which your mental acuity has been impacted you're not going to know you're not going to know you're going to think you know uh, and you're going to say hey I'm I'm great, I'm great, I'm good to go. Uh, more wrecks happen not because somebody's stumbling down drunk, but they've had a buzz on and they think they're okay. And if they drive and they don't have any issues, they, they, they may get home okay. But what happens is that most wrecks occur because there's about a two or three second window that the accident many accidents can be avoided if you've got strong mental acuity. Hey, you know, you know, watch out, here it comes. Look up, you know, slow down. Here comes the car, it's going through the stop, uh, stop sign, stop light. But if your mental acuity is impacted, that one or two second delay in those synapses in your good brain can, can blow by that and then next thing you know, you're in a wreck and your legal issues are nothing compared to your physical issues and whether or not uh, you're going to be seriously impaired or whether somebody else has been seriously impaired. So when people talk about alcohol, it's not just a be a good citizen talk that parents give their children and that universities give their children. It's because motor vehicle is a deadly weapon. And if you have, think of it this way. If somebody had a gun and they were drunk or they'd had a buzz on, and they were waving around a gun, that, would you think that would be a good thing? Well, of course not. That vehicle 
is much more dangerous than a, 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 a gun in many ways. And uh, so be mindful of that. Be mindful of designated drivers. Um, and I know you've heard a lot of this, and I know you likely believe all of this until you get down to, oh, come on, we're just going on down, you know, we're just, you know, don't be a prude, hop in the car, we're going to go, and then, you know, you're in a, you're in a bad position, you don't want to say no because you don't want to seem like you're a party pooper, uh, and so you get in a bad place, and good kids get in bad places, not because they intend to, but they're just, they've got this one thing that leads to another, the next thing, and then there you are, and you're in the middle of something, and you're in a bad place. So be mindful about uh, this alcohol issue, um, and, and if you can, try to think through uh, those circumstances where something, you know, all of a sudden you're, you know, in the wrong place, um, and uh, be mindful of that. Um, questions or comments? If I told you more than you wanted to know about, about that. <laughs> Mike, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, if you're pulled over, what what is your recommendation about if they ask to search your car? Or what? If they, generally speaking, uh, and I'm not a criminal lawyer, but generally speaking, if they have probable calls to, um, to stop you, uh, then the police generally has broad latitude about searching your vehicle. Now there's some rules that, that limit that a little bit. You can't, I'm not sure you can stop somebody on a traffic charge and say, let me, let me uh, look in your trunk see if you have drugs if there's no suggestion. But if you give permission, they can. They can. If you say, may I search your vehicle, uh, you know, you don't have to give them permission. If they've got probable cause, that's up to them. The law says basically, we don't want police officers stopping somebody and then saying, uh, well, you know, I just sort of stopped. Yeah, you look like you were speeding a little bit. And that guy's, he's, I think he's been doing some things that, uh, that are not particularly good around here. And I'll stop and then I'll search it and then I'll find you've got something in your vehicle. So if you're stopped, uh, you don't have to give them permission. You can say, you know, May I search your vehicle? No, sir, unless, I mean, what, what would be the basis for that? Now, the better rule would be, of course, that you don't have anything in your vehicle that, um, <laughs> that that's illegal. Um, but whether you have anything in there illegal and your buddies in your car have something, that's some drug thing, uh, that, that's, that's where you might get uh, nabbed on that. But uh, if you're stopped, be truthful but you don't have any obligation generally to allow for a consensual search of your vehicle. Uh, what, what is the driver's liability for passengers carrying alcohol, drinking drugs, alcohol? Drugs. There are certain rules uh, depending on the ages of the relative parties are about whether or not um, um, if you're 21 and you're riding along with somebody who's uh, under 21 and they're drinking, uh, um, you know, something that's prohibited under the law, that you might have some uh, exposure about having somebody underage drink or uh, ride in your in your vehicle. So, and those laws are nuanced and different things for different people. But um, if you're uh, if you're driving the vehicle, you're the captain of the ship. Uh, and there's some things that can happen that you may not know. So just assume anything going on that's not allowed or is illegal, uh, that it could come back to you. That would be the way I would approach it. Again, that's how good kids get into, they're good, they're not doing anything, but uh, then they hop in the car, let's go to the mall, and uh, somebody's got a buzz on, and one thing leads to another, and then you're complicit in it, and then you've got some, some issues. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, I have two. One was about um, number two, the employment contracts. Mm -hmm. A lot of the students here are encouraged to do co-ops and internships. Mm -hmm. Does that ever come into play if they're doing a co-op or an internship and, you know, if they walk away and share information, is there liability there? The question is, let's say that you uh, have an internship. I know you've got a very good uh, active program here at, uh, that encourages that and involves uh, uh, many of the students in, in employment situations. Uh, 
they may ask you to sign something that says uh, this information is proprietary. And proprietary just means, hey, this is our stuff, and um, you know we own it, and it's 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 unique to us, uh, or we feel that it's unique to us. Um, and um, and so if you sign something that says you're not going to divulge that information, uh, that means you're contractually and legally liable if you, you can't disclose it to anybody. You can't tell your buddies back in the dorm or in your apartment, hey, let me tell you what we were working on down at the lab today. Um, you know, you, you can't discuss it. And, and so that's why they have those, those rules. So when you sign something, uh, that's not sort of the agreement. Uh, do they really mean it? Yeah, they really mean it. They really mean it. They really mean it. And because these uh, folks spend millions of dollars coming up with processes uh, and, and other things. And so that is their uh, advantage in the marketplace. And they don't want folks uh, uh, appropriating their advantage in some careless statement uh, or giving it to somebody else. Uh, and so, uh, yes, if you sign something, uh, you really need to read through and you have a clear understanding. Now, most of you, I'm sure all of you, are, you're not going to knowingly violate uh, an agreement that you have with somebody. But if you just sort of got it and signed it and never read it, don't understand it, uh, then you might carelessly uh, do something that you may not be aware of. So. Uh, uh, a good rule of thumb is read what you sign. Kind of like, did you ever take a test, you know, read this all the way through before you begin the test? Mm -hmm. And then you get down to the end and you have read through and then you find something, this is a trick. <laughs> a, this is a hoax. Um, so read, read what you have and, and make sure you understand it. Make sure you understand it. Other questions? Um, if you work at a store where you are, where uh, money is involved, are you allowed to share your performance, like based on like how many sales per hour you've gotten with other companies, like in interviews or showing how well you've done? Uh, the question is, if you have a a job interview <coughs> and you say, uh, "Let me tell you how I've uh, done on on my performance," uh, unless there's something uh, in the agreement with your present employer, uh, which it, likely there would not be, uh, about how you've done in terms of your, your sales um, ability. Uh, unless there's something in that contract or your employer relationship, generally you'd be, the, the general rule is, unless it's something that's prohibited, then it's allowed. Because the law wants people to be able to move around and do and go to different jobs and do things. We want to encourage people to be in commerce. We don't want to limit people's rights unless there's some real clear, valid legal reason to do so. But uh, I, I can't imagine what uh, your sales record, uh, that that would be prohibited uh, because, uh, you know, that's, that's your performance and you're not revealing any uh, secret information. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, number nine, avoiding legal problems with contracts. Right. Let's just say I wanted to sell a flat screen TV or a sofa for my room, mm -hmm. and you're saying write it out. You know, so and so is going to pay me X amount of dollars, like $150 for this furniture on a certain date. Is it enough just to write it out on a piece of paper and have both parties sign it, or is it something that really needs to be uh, gone through an attorney? You, you're not, the question is, well, you've got some, my, I'm selling a flat screen TV, I'm getting ready to go move back home, I'm out through school, uh, do you need, you don't, you, you, you probably don't need a written contract for that, you certainly don't need a lawyer to do that. Uh, it's just good to have clarity about what the terms are, uh, but the main term is, don't release the property till you've been paid. <laughs> That's the main thing. Uh, and with uh, good good funds, too. When it gives you a bad check, um, you know, they've got the TV and you've got the claim for a bad check. Uh, so I think it's useful uh, if you can. And you can go, the people can go to the bank and get a cashier's check. 
cashier's check is the bank <coughs> check. So if I give somebody my check, uh, and for some reason I don't have sufficient funds, you go to cash the check and it bounces. You know, you don't get paid because I didn't have enough money in the account. If I go and I take my check and I go to the bank and I say, I, I got a check I want to write for $150, they take that out of my account and they write the bank's check. So the bank is liable on that check. So it's the bank, so you, you, that check almost always is going to be good, unless the bank's folded. Um, so particularly on big purchases uh, or sales, if you're selling uh, flat screen TV, you're selling your vehicle, uh, you need to get a cashier's check because you don't want to get paper that turns out not to be good for whatever reason, did, unintended, didn't realize. Um, you know, you sell your car um, and you move back to uh, Pennsylvania and the person to whom you sold the car lives in Alabama um, and now they've got your vehicle uh, and you got a bad check, uh, you know, from somebody here that now it's in Alabama and you're in Pennsylvania, <laughs> you know, you're going to have some troubles getting get paid. So cashier's check uh, is how you want to make sure that you get paid. You want to make sure that you get paid when you're selling something, particularly with college students who are um, going back home, moving to, you know, another state. Get, get paid, get paid, and don't assume, you know, most people are honest, but, um, you know, a bad check's a bad check. It's like, well, they didn't intend it. Well, it comes out the same way. Uh, so try to get a cashier's check, and as I say, just be real clear about what the, uh, you know, what the terms are, and be careful about what you say in terms of uh, making representations that oh, I've never had any problems with this, and they have a problem, and they say, well, you told me this TV is, is great. And well, you know, then you get into some challenges. So be careful about what you say about how good something is. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. May I ask a question about the legal field, if you don't mind? Sure, sure. There are thousands of people who graduate from law school every year, and it's incredibly competitive to get hired. What would you recommend what attributes are you looking for um, in the ideal candidate? What kind of qualities? Well, I think uh, what what people want, uh, what law firms want when they hire a, a lawyer, is they want somebody who's uh, a clear thinker and a clear writer. And if I was going to suggest um, a skill that hopefully you've developed and that you continue to develop, is that you're a clear thinker and that you're a clear writer. And a lot of times the knock on law students, even kids coming out of law school, is that they are not as good a writer as they, as they should be. They're not as clear, um, careless punctuation. But they're just not as very clear. You know, they, they don't write declarative sentences uh, in a way that uh, conveys information. So uh, somebody who's a clear writer uh, and a clear thinker, uh, somebody who has a good work ethic um, and that um, um, you know has some bearing <coughs> bearing about it, uh, or what I would say is uh, the main the main thing um, the law professions got you know a lot of people uh, the law jobs are down now due to the recession and some, some changes but um, um, the good thing about a law degree is um, it, it's in some ways it's very similar to what you get when you come out of this place. If you've excelled at Elon University, uh, you've got a good head on your shoulders, uh, and you're you're a pretty good thinker on things, and you've got a pretty good work ethic. Likely, when you've gone to law school, uh, you really learned how to analyze problems, uh, and that's why lawyers uh, serve in so many roles in government and. Uh, Companies, a lot of big CEOs of public traded companies are former general counsels because the lawyers are clear thinkers. So uh, work on you know just understanding things um, and uh, thinking through things, uh, not shooting from the hip, would be uh, be helpful. And I would suggest you know talk to lawyers. Uh, I talk to a lot of lawyers at Wake Forest and other young people. Uh, uh, with whom I have some contact, talk to a lawyer and, um, 
and you know, sit down, say, how's, it, how's this go, and, and find out about it. You'd be glad to, that you did. Well, I hope this has uh, been helpful to you. Again, if you have questions, all you have to do is call me or email me. Now, you don't give me any free things from a lawyer, so you better take advantage of it. <laughs> so if you get a call or, you know, if you have something, uh, call me, just remind me. I'll do my dead level best to help answer your question if I can in that fashion. Recommend a lawyer who can help you in the area in which you live, whether it's in North Carolina or there's other places. Um, so I would really commend this program to you. Uh, I, I, this is sounds, I don't know why more schools don't have this, but this is a very innovative program. I would strongly encourage you when you find out the full uh, uh, series of, of seminars here and you, the things you learn, it will help you in many, many, many ways. It'll make better decisions, be clearer thinkers, uh, save money, avoid a lot of problems that you don't see coming. Uh, it's a very good program, and I would commend that uh, to you. So, let me just kind of real quickly go around and tell me where you all from. Where are you from? I'm from New York. Where in New York? Rochester. Okay. I'm from Orlando, Florida. All right. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Where? Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Uh, Westchester County, New York. Okay. I'm from Atlanta. All right. Oldsbrook, Connecticut. Where? Oldsbrook, Connecticut. Now, where is that in Connecticut? It's at the mouth of the Connecticut River. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, I hope again this has uh, been helpful. Don't hesitate uh, to call and um, and um, good luck with your uh, with your trip. And the last thing I would tell you, and this is not the legal advice, but sort of private advice, uh, because it's very important. Because I talk to a lot of young people about well, what am I going to do in my career? Look, you have so many more choices. Uh, than your parents had. And so, you know, if you take a couple of years to decide what you really want to do with your life, the world does not come to an end. Back when your parents were going to school, you got out of school, you got a job, and you moved on. And that's, you know, you want to be purposeful. But if you don't know what you want to do, take a little time, because what you don't want to do is get into a job that you can get because you've got a great degree and you've got good brain power. And you can make money, and then you do something, and you, you know, you're 35 years of age, and you say, this is not what, you know, my parents, this is not what I really want to do. What am I going to do now? So if you take a couple of years, and you're studying, and you're thinking about it, take a couple of years before you go to graduate school, that's okay. That's okay. Now, you got to support yourself. Your parents are going to want you to support yourself, <laughs> of course. But take some time. Don't get involved in something because you've got the brain power and become a doctor, lawyer, Indian chief because you can and then get into something and say, but this is not what I want to do. So you've got a lot of choices. You're lucky you've got so many more choices because you've gone to this fine place. Uh, take your time. You'll be glad you did. Enjoy, enjoy what you do. Uh, and uh, the journey's going to be a lot better than how much money you make, that's for sure. OK, thanks for your time. Thank you. I want to tell you now that we have lunch We've got Panera in the kitchen. Oh my God. Please feel free. <laughs> and as you can tell, Mike has some fabulous, wonderful wisdom and experience. So if you want to stay and converse more, we'd love to have you. But please have some lunch. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Remember that thing about dumb guys now, okay? Because you are disproportionately dumb relative to your female counterparts. So, uh, so when in doubt, ask a female counterpart what they say. <laughs>